Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Laura and today I'm doing a collaboration video. This collaboration is being done with two lovely manga tubers, so please go and check out their videos after you watch this one and check out what their recommendations are as well. That is uh, Simply G and Whimsical Pictures and if you're not subscribed to them already, I highly recommend both of their channels. Um, so basically today what we're going to talk about is five recommendations of female authors who write shonen and seinen manga. Shonen is a demographic that is essentially just a marketing uh, term or a marketing um, mandate uh, towards a young male audience. And Seinen, uh, similarly, is a marketing demographic towards an uh, older teen to adult male audience. And generally, you know, when we take these terms, we kind of assume this is all uh, manga for men, it's men only, it is a boys club, you know, that no women allowed. And, you know, as a female reader especially, I know that this is not true and I can see that there is a wide variety of manga in the shonen and and seinen demographics that I think are forgotten. Not only that, but as sort of an exclusive boys club, female authors are really forgotten in this demographic. They've had a hard time getting a foothold uh, writing as industry professionals and then, you know, they also just don't seem to gain the recognition that they deserve. So um, the three of us decided that we would really like to highlight some of these female authors that we think are worth reading, worth checking out, and maybe authors that you didn't even realize were females writing some of your favorite titles. Uh, so obviously the authors that I'm going to talk about um, are going to be a little bit older probably. Um, they might be authors of titles that you don't even know about and they might be even be titles that are out of print and that just naturally happens because that's what my collection looks like but definitely if you're interested in checking out some more popular or newer or fresher authors or some you know hyped authors that you might not even realize are women please go and check out both of these other ladies channels because I'm sure you'll have lots of good recommendations from them as well. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to just highlight five authors that I think are interesting um, as female authors in shonen and seinen manga. The first author that I wanted to recommend to you is Kyu Hayashida. And Kyu Hayashida is the author of Dora Hedoro, which is a seinen title. Um, and as far as I know, she doesn't have too many titles on the market. Um, she has sort of two that are in Japan that are, I think are quite famous, but um, this is the one that is over here. It was published in Iki magazine. Um, and it is part of Viz's Sig Icky line. Um, so Dora Hidoro is essentially the story about Kaiman, who is a, a reptile-headed person um, who has forgotten his memories or has lost his memories and doesn't really know who he is. He doesn't know how he's come to have this reptile head. He's been kind of cursed by a sorcerer. And so now he's on a quest to essentially find out what his memories are. Um, the art in it is uh, fantastic. It's incredibly gritty. It's incredibly bloody. It's a very brutal, crazy world. And Hayashida is known for her gritty alternate realities. So um, she's a really great author that I, I would recommend. I've only actually read this first volume, but um, I really felt like this was an author that I wanted to read when I found out that it was a female author because it's very unusual to find female authors in the horror genre. I don't know too many, um, so I was very excited when I found this out. And so I highly recommend this author. Um, and uh, the series is, is ongoing. It is getting uh, quite long, but um, I think that it's a very interesting series and the art in it is very uh, gritty and dark and exciting. And you can see here, um, like in the middle, there's actually color pages in this book. and and just the, the color and the way that it's illustrated and just that blood red saturation um, of color is it's amazing to look at so I'm actually really looking forward to picking up more of this title and um, you know at this point I really really recommend uh, Q Hayashida. The next author that I wanted to feature was Daisuke Higuchi and Daisuke Higuchi is the author uh, most notably of Whistle. Um, as far as I know she doesn't have any other titles that have been translated into English but Whistle is a very fun sports shonen series. It is slightly different in that the main character doesn't actually have that natural aptitude or he doesn't have the uh, basically full developed skill um, at the time of discovering the sport. Um, this story is really about a young man who 
um, wants to play soccer, but because he is so small, he isn't really allowed, and so he ends up getting an opportunity to play soccer, but at that time, um, he is introduced as an all-star player and uh, is soon discovered that he isn't, um, so he has to work really hard to kind of prove himself, not only because people now think of him as not being an all-star, but also because he is small and so he already has, you know, uh, one one strike against him in the sport. Um, it's a really fun series, um, it's a, a nice long series, and you know it does follow typical shonen sports manga patterns, but it's a lot of fun and it's really nice to see a sports manga written uh, from the perspective of a woman. Um, there are a handful of sports manga that um, uh, belong in the shoujo shoujo demographic, and there are a handful of shonen sports manga that are written by women, but this one in particular um, is still fairly available. It is published by Viz Manga, um, and it's very nice to see a woman in a typically male-dominated uh, genre. So the next author that I would like to recommend is Toa Oshima. Now this title does look like it could potentially be a shoujo title, but it was uh, marketed to uh, seinen audience, so it is uh, actually intended as an adult kind of male audience, and uh, when you read the content it really does uh, match that audience, or at least um, it does in my opinion. It does tend to get quite etchy, but it is a very interesting perspective coming from a woman, so that the the comedy, the etchy, the, the scenarios that occur um, with these students and the kind of the fan service that is written is quite different than you would get in another uh, you know, very etchy comedy series. So it's very interesting to read from a woman's perspective um, this scene in a high school girl comedy um, because there are quite a lot of series that are like this in that uh, in that demographic. The reason that I include this title is probably the very first title that I really connected with on a personal level. Not to say that I had like, you know, an emotional response to it, but um, I really saw my high school experience in this manga, you know, despite the fan service, despite the edgy nature of it, um, you know, despite the extreme uh, scenarios that these students get into, um, I really, it, I felt like this was my high school experience. And so um, when I read this, it feels uh, very true, but also very funny. And um, in a way, I wish that I didn't remember those things, but at the same time, like, this is just, it is so funny. It is such an unusual um, take on the the comedy that um, a lot of series just, you know, they just don't go towards. Now, there is also an anime, I think it was called Girls High, and I did watch a little bit of, bit of it, but it really doesn't compare to the manga. So, you know, if you are into a, a seinen, you know, etchy, earthy comedy, um, I would really recommend this title, or at least maybe, you know, I'm, I've got the wrong perspective because I do feel really attached to it, but um, I really think that this is a lot of a, a fun read and also just really a different type of read coming from a woman. The next author that I wanted to recommend to you um, is Rumiko Takahashi. Now Rumiko Takahashi basically started her career with the popular Urusei Yatsura series. Um, this is essentially a series about an alien who comes down to Earth and, um, you know, comedy ensues. Um, so it's just a, a really fun and crazy series. She also has many popular titles in her catalog, including Inuyasha, which is a shonen series, Ranma Half, which is shonen, Mermaid Saga, Shonen, One Pound Gospel, which is a Seinen sports series, and Meisani Koku, which is another Seinen series, this one about um, life in an apartment complex. So Rumiko Takahashi, she's got a very distinct art style. She does tend to be um, quite repetitive with that art style, but it is definitely and distinctly her own, and there isn't really anybody else who copies her style. Um, and her stories have been well-loved and well-received. And they are some of the stories that have brought so many people into the fandom because they are so fun and exciting and crazy and wacky. And she's been doing this for 40 years. Like, this was published 40 years ago. And uh, basically exclusively been working in the shonen and seinen demographics. So, you know, even if you don't like her, you have to really appreciate her body of work. She has been producing a ton of work and a ton of crazy fun stories. And um, they're 
you know, they're well loved in many different corners of the community, so I highly recommend her titles. And the last author I'm going to recommend is probably one of my favorite female authors of the kind of demographic, and uh, she was definitely the first author that I thought of when we were actually discussing whether or not we should make this collaboration, and that is Kanako Inuki. Now, <laughs> now you may not be familiar with this author, but I love her so much. She is a kind of traditional Japanese manga horror author, and um, she draws a lot of her inspiration, her art style, and her um, storytelling from Kazuo Umezu, who is basically the god of horror, and from Hideshi Hino, who is really the grossest horror author I've probably read in manga. So she's just got this great combination of that. Um, she, uh, as far as I know, only has two titles in print in English. Um, this one is out of print um, from CMX called Presence, about a girl who, w because she doesn't receive gifts on her birthday, she never ages, and so she continues to never age, and now she's at, at a point where she uh, gives presents to to kids and gives them what they deserve, and uh, it's it's kind of a terrifying and horrible. And um, I I laughed, <laughs> I laugh a lot in this manga because it is just so surprising and disturbing. Um, there is something incredibly disturbing about drawing children in horror, um, especially when the child is the scary element. Um, so she has presence. Uh, the other title that she has that I'm aware of is School Zone, and this one is published by uh, Dark Horse. Again, I'm not entirely sure that this one is in print anymore. Um, this is a story about a cursed school, and essentially um, children must go to and from school always in a group, and if they get lost or separated, then horrible things will happen. And there are reasons for it, and, and it does go into a full story about why this stuff is happening. But it is, is gross and horrible and terrible, and uh, it's a terrifying experience. Um, I really love Kanako Inuki's horror. Um, I don't really see her as a female horror artist or a female artist. I just see her as a horror artist and it's, um, you know, she's just one of the great, she is known as the queen of horror manga. Um, you know, and she was in this business before Junji Ito. Like, you know, she's been around for a long time. This is uh, written, I think, 30 years ago. So, um, you know, she's got a long history in manga and manga in general has never been really kind of touted as a noble profession in Japan, or at least it hadn't been at the time that she entered manga as a career. And then as a female manga author to enter into the horror genre in general is just um, incredibly difficult and um, and she really was making a statement for women saying, why can't we like this too? And so she did what she liked. And I'm incredibly proud and grateful for her for that. So if you ever have an opportunity to pick these up, you probably will find them at a secondhand sale, if anywhere. Um, I would highly recommend it. Uh, presents you don't actually have to pick up in any order. It is all short stories. So if you ever see it, like highly recommend it, especially the second volume, because that one has short stories about uh, the horrors of Santa Claus, and I will never look at Santa Claus the same way again, thanks to Kaneko Inuki. So she is one of my most favorite authors. She's definitely one of my top favorite horror manga authors of all time and I love her and highly recommend her. So those are my five recommendations for female authors of shonen and seinen titles. I hope you found this interesting. I hope that this sort of encouraged you to pick up some more female authors or to kind of look at the authors that you're reading and actually explore who it is writing the stories that you're looking at. Um, if you are interested, and I hope you are, please go and check out um, my friends Whimsical Pictures and Simply G's videos. They will have lots of recommendations for you as well as some titles that are in print, which is <laughs> kind of nice. Um, anyway, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.